What are the pitfalls to using events and what do you do uh, to replace events? Do you create singletons or public class object variables then use the reference, then use to reference the class? What do you think about that? What do you think about events in general, the pitfalls? Yeah, see, this is one of those things where um, when, when you first start learning about software architecture, uh, I kind of find that it, it feels like every new tool you learn is like a new um, it's like a new tool in a tool belt, right? It's a new hammer or screwdriver or something. And you find yourself just desperately trying to find places to use it. <laughs> and <laughs> even then you start to see them as very separate things. You, you kind of, you, you don't, you don't conceptualize the fact that there's any relationship between a hammer and a screwdriver. They're two separate tools I've learned. I have events over here. I have the observer pattern over here. I have singletons over here. And these are the different tools in my belt. And I can only use the one if I need that one. Um, but as you start to kind of, go further into this, you start to realize that software architecture is, it's an end goal, kind of, it's, it's not a tool. So the idea being that you're, you are trying to make cleaner code by drawing good lines in your software. And so I could go into very specific detail about when I prefer to choose events versus when I prefer to use an observer or an event bus or something. But I think that that kind of misses the point of what the real heart of the question is, which is why should or shouldn't you use these? And I think the answer is more a case of if, if you if you get into the habit of, of asking yourself the question, what am I trying to do rather than what does this tool do and how can I apply it, you can start to see that any one of them technically works and the pitfalls and benefits are entirely, it's entirely down to what project you're working on. So I don't really concern myself with those issues. So for example, mm -hmm. if I need to decouple two classes, I will use the first thing that comes to mind. Now granted from experience, I might have a better idea of which one I should use, but I don't dwell on the issue because as long as I decouple two things, I can then go back and change how I decouple them later, you know, because that's the point of already decoupled them. I can just choose what the messaging service is after the fact. So I don't I don't think that there's much value in, in sort of really clinically comparing two together. I think it's much more valuable to say, do you understand why it's there in the first place? Why do people even care about events? Why is it bad to couple things? And if you can just kind of internalize that idea and split up your code into logical chunks, you can pretty much just use whichever one you like and then learn more about the others and you'll you'll start to get a handle on what those differences are rather than just clinically writing them down. So a, a kind of a good example of this is if you go into collections and you start learning about how collections work, there's a lot of collections out there. Everybody knows lists, everybody knows arrays, but there's a lot more. There's array lists, there's hash maps, there's hash sets, there's um There's even like concurrent bags. There's concurrent, concurrent lists, lists, concurrent yeah. lists, yeah, the whole lot. And each one have different <laughs> pros and cons. And usually it comes down to um the time, um, the logarithmic time for, for certain things, how long, how fast is it to read it, how fast is it to search it, how fast is it to get an indexed item, how fast is it to iterate them all. There's a whole load of different things, and they're very specifically benefits, pros and cons. But if someone said to me, should I use a hash map here or a link list, I'd be like, just use a list for now, and then when the question comes up, when you're when you're optimizing, then you can go back and look at it later. And knowing the differences between these specifics is not going to make you a massively better programmer, because you, you can kind of delude yourself by spending a lot of time learning these micro optimizations when you're missing the point of a list is there as a generic concept of a collection to separate a collection of things from your code and understanding how to draw a repository line there is 50 times more valuable than using the correct version of the right storage medium so i would say just just look into architecture and play with it and don't don't get too bogged down about the specific of events versus calling get component versus using a singleton or a bus or whatever. That's not as important as understanding why you're drawing those lines and how to draw them well. Yeah. And, it, and like you said, once it's decoupled, then you can go back and you can figure out how it is that classes communicate with each other later. Uh, what's important is the decoupling because if once once it's coupled, if you if you write something that's coupled, it's way harder to to have to pull out and yank that out later on. Um, so something that's interesting, like, uh, if you've ever seen like the agile manifesto and I'm not talking about like scrum and the corporatized version of agile, but the, the basic agile, uh, one of the things they say is, is the decision you should make, you know, if, if you're, if you're at a decision point between two things, you should choose the thing that's easiest to change later. Um, mm -hmm. and the easiest thing to change is just by the fact that you've decoupled it, uh, you know, you can go back and change whether you use events or, or some other mechanism, you can easily change that later. 